hello guys welcome back to my channel thank you for always stopping by liking commenting subscribing for the new ones don't forget to like comment subscribe turn on notification bell so that you all will be notified on when i drop the next episode on i do stay tuned on today's episode najma opens the door and is shocked and says mr durenda he enters and asks for zoya zoya is hiding Dochad looks at Asad and Asad keeps mute. Durenda starts facial confirmation with a picture. He looks at Asad and Asad stares back and he says, Why the stare? He's a man of principle and rules. Who knows, maybe Zoya had a haircut. Asad says, Great. Durenda grills him and Asad says, I said nothing. Durenda continues that no one seems to know where Zoya is. It seems. His assistant offers to look around and takes Asad help to stand on the table. <laughs> Shots Dolly. Tanvi deliberately looks at Zoya at the place she's hiding and Dorenda follows her stare. Asad asks Dorenda to sit but he refuses and said Zoya did the wrong thing. She lied to extend her stay here so by tonight Zoya has to leave India. His assistant says that Zoya can't hide from her boss as he can see backwards too. Zoya sneaks out of her hiding place and Asad is worried. Durenda talks of knowing what's going on behind his back and Zoya freezes but manages to leave the hall in time. Diocha says that Zoya is not a criminal. She's a good girl who wants to stay in her country. Durenda says surely she can stay but within rules. Durenda asks his assistant if he can start the search and she says yes. Zoya wonders what she should do and then spots sketch pen on the bed and gets an idea. Durenda enters the room and Zoya screams, Don't come near. I have chicken pox. Durenda is shocked and asks his assistant to get the file and she gets it. Zoya smiles at Asad. Durenda says that the law have an option that a person who is sick can stay back till she is cured, but after that she will be deported. Zoya is wiping her face and overhearing the conversation. Durenda asks why Asad and family didn't inform him. They explained that they wanted him to confirm himself. Durenda says okay. Tanvia gets an idea and hides Durenda's car key. Asad assures Zoya will be cured. They leave. All hug and smile. Tanvi thinks that this happiness is for a moment only. Razia comes into a young room and finds Shirin sitting with his guitar. She calls out to Shirin and tells her that it seems Humaira's dad's clothes are mixed with Ayan's, so she needs to check and open Ayan's cupboard. She tells Shirin that they need to find some solution to black magic. Shirin says what can they do? Razia takes out a lighter and burns Ayan's coat. She screams and Shirin checks. Razia says since someone is doing black magic on Ayan, Shirin is scared and Razia says that the coat that is burnt is the one that Ayan wore previously doing Ayan and Humara's engagement. Zoya tells Asa that he has to agree that she is super smart. She says that when she got the idea, she thought that she had chicken box as, as a kid and used the idea. So she's super smart. Duranda claps and says it's great he forgot his keys and got to see what Zoya had done with his own eyes. He is lucky. He says all know what he is called. He tells his assistant to arrange for Zoya's deport. Asad fumes while Zoya is sad. Shirin tells Raza that things are going out of control. Even Baba didn't give solution. What to do? Raza says no. Baba had said that in Ayan's life some big decision is being taken and it should be taken fast so that the evil shadow passes off. Razia wonders what black magic could be. Could it be? Shirin says biggest thing is Ayan's engagement happening before Asad and so Duchad is praying for all these bad things for Ayan. Razia agrees and says so the big things should happen sooner for Ayan. Shirin says they need to do what they need to right away. The assistant says all is done. Zoya apologizes to Durenda, but he says it won't affect him one bit. Zoya looks at Asad. The assistant drags Zoya out while Najma and Dilchard protest. Asad says stop. He can't take Zoya as she has a legal reason to stay back. And the reason is that him and Zoya are getting engaged. Zoya is shocked. Even Najma too. Durenda says engagement. Zoya says yes and smiles. She goes to stand next to Asad and asks if he won't wish them. Durenda asks, why didn't no one inform him? Dilchad and Najma says that so many things happened and so fast that they couldn't tell. 
Dorenda says she had chicken pots a while back and now this. Zoya says she was panic stricken so and was worried that he would separate her from her man. Right? Asad nods. Dorenda says if Zoya was scared, then why didn't others tell him about the engagement? Ducha says she didn't want to tell everyone. Dorenda says because they are lying. Zoya says no. They are having a small ceremony. Dorenda asks Stanvia why she's not saying anything. Zoya says she came a few days back. She's a guest, so how would she say anything because she doesn't know about it? Dorenda says this family is secretive, but I won't buy this. Only if Asad and Zoya have to face a test. Asad and Zoya are confused. Asad, they are subjected to questioning about their relationship by Mr. Dorenda. Zoya begins a romantic story, but Asad keeps cutting it short and tries to keep it as simple as possible. Then the officer asks Asad where they met. Why Zoya again gets into a long story? Asad stops her saying actually how he reminisced her was when he first saw her at the Mazar. Zoya is astounded to hear this, his explanation and his accurate detailing about their first encounter. Tanvi is very disturbed. Asad asks if there are many more questions, but the officer says that he has questioned enough. But as he's about to go, he turns back again to congratulate them on their engagement. Zoya thanks him. He leaves with his PA, saying that he would begin the formalities for her visa extension, adding that he would need pictures of their engagement. Ashad is shocked, but Zoya is very confident that he would get the pictures. He asks about engagement date. Zoya says that it's tomorrow, whereas Asad says that it's the day after. Dorenda asks for a definite step. Tilchat said that it would happen tomorrow. He leaves. After having argued for a while about how their dates about their ideas, Asad tells Dilcha that for Zoya to stay here, they don't have to fake an engagement. Dilcha says that it's just a matter of exchanging rings. Asad says that he can't trivialize the institution of marriage and won't do this. He leaves. Dilcha asks Zoya not to worry as Asad would agree when she talks to him. Tanvi thinks that she won't let this happen. Rashid asks the reason why Shirin is hurrying with the engagement. When Shirin tells him, about the black magic, Rashi refuses to believe her. As Shirin is about to blot that Dilchard is behind us, Raja stops her saying that God knows who is behind us. She says that she knows that Ayan wants to marry Humaira and therefore they should hurry up and double up with Nikat's marriage. He tells Shirin that they should think before doing this. Shirin says that she's not so superstitious and she just wants to see her son happy. Badibi says what's wrong is not her decision but she has been influenced by someone else. Shirin asks her to refrain from these things as Ayan is her son and she should be allowed to take the decision. Badibi says that had Ayan said yes, she would have done it too, but he hasn't as he has been trapped with Razia. Shirin breaks out saying that she knows the conspirator and blots her that Dilchad is behind the black magic and she's helping her. Rashid is shocked to hear this and scolds Shirin for talking like this. Shirin says that he may not believe her, but let him get her son to marry the girl that he likes with that. Rashi tries to, and she doesn't understand why anyone has a problem with that. Rashi tries to stop, but Badibi stops him, saying that when a mother feels injustice being meted out to her son, nothing can stop or calm her right now. When Rashid goes, Badibi says that Razia indeed played a good trick on Shirin and turned her against her. Razia says that her death might be in God's hands, but her going from this house is in her hands. She turns around to leave, but turns back to say that it's not possible for gentleman to stoop so low so as that too is an act. Badibi says that she would give her a rightful response and soon. Ayan tells Badibi and Rashid that he is not under any influence, but he indeed wants to get married to Mara as Shirin wants. Razia is happy to hear this. Shirin too is relieved. Mamu says they should hurry with the engagement then. Razia says they would be that would be her responsibility. As Raja turns to go, Ayan says that he has a condition first and says that this is a big step for him engaging with Humaira and he would take this step only when that person who taught him his first step comes. Mamu scolds him for even thinking of calling Asad in this house. Razia too tries to tell him that they don't have any connection with that house. Ayan says that he has 
one and he would stay adamant on this condition for engagement. Shirin says that his condition will be granted. Ayan says that he agrees. The girls go in glee and tell Zumaira of her engagement tomorrow. But seeing her very sad, they come inside with her. Where Umaira surprises them by happily dancing and with them. But then Razia comes in and tells Umaira to come along with her. She leaves with Razia. Mr. Duranda tells Dolly that they should begin visa extension formalities for Zoya. Tanvir calls from a public booth and tells the immigration officer that she has to give an information that the engagement of Asad and Zoya is fake. The officer is shocked to hear this. He says that he knew, but the intention for pretending to believe that that story was that he wanted to catch them unawares. He thanks Tanvir for that information and tells Dolly to cancel the proceedings for extension. When Ayan calls up Asad and tells him of his engagement, Asad is shocked, but when Ayan goes on to invite him, Asa plainly refuses, saying that it's not possible. But then Rashid takes the phone and asks him to come, if not for anyone else, his own brother. Asa tells him that he would give his life for Ayan, but he won't step into that house that destroyed his mother's life. He cancels the phone and throws the phone on the bed. Hearing this and seeing Asad upset standing on the door, Zoya thinks that Asad won't go to Ayan's engagement, and after he helped her so much with the visa, she should reciprocate the effort. She decides to do something. Asad is giving the ring that Dilchard had made for her future daughter-in-law. Asad is overwhelmed to receive this. He asks why she's giving it to him. She says he he would need it to put it on Zoya's finger. Asad says that it's useless as he isn't going to do it. Dilchard says that sometimes for the right thing to happen, they have to take the wrong path. Asad still doesn't want to admit that he might need it, but Dilchard insistently gives it to Asad that he might need it come day. Tanvia sees Asad gazing at the ring with venomous eyes. Ayan tells Zoya on the phone that even though he's unaware of this still, he would go ahead with the ceremony. He says that he's following her advice to value love in his life, as it's very rare but it would be wonderful for him if Asad comes for the ceremony tomorrow. He asks how would Zoya get Asad to his house tomorrow. She gets into her poetry. Zoya asks Ayan not to worry for Asad's presence in the ceremony while dealing with a lot of electrical circuits. Seeing Asad come in, she cancels the phone. Asad asks her to take her circuit elsewhere as he has to work. They get into a fight as to who would do the work and in whose position. They get into a scuffle about whose stupid idea it was about the engagement. Tanvia sees the sea hotels of two people and is happy that the immigration officer sees this fight while they are fighting on the engagement issue. While fighting, Mr. Duranda and Dolly are shocked to see Asad and Zoya in each other's arms. Mr. Duranda thinks that now even he believes of their love. While Tanvi watches with disgust her plan falling apart, Razia calls Tanvi that she still hasn't been able to get Zoya out of the country. Tanvi says that she would just take two more days. Mamu interrupts Razia asking about engagement arrangement and Razia assures that it would be a very special day, which Tanvi is here. Razia asks Tanvi to make tomorrow the day that Zoya departs. Tanvi says that she has to send Zoya out and she knows it. After Tanvi cancels the phone, she thinks to herself that more than for Razia, she wants Zoya out of her way as she herself plans to destroy Razia, remembering how she had insulted her. Ayan's sisters and Humaira are trying on dresses for the ceremony tomorrow. When Humaira tries on the dress that she'd wear, Ayan faces her and the other girls makes an excuse to leave them alone. But Ayan is unable to say anything and leaves. Zoya is busy in her own plans of arranging gifts for Ayan while Tanvi watches. She asks Zoya what she is doing. Zoya says that she isn't preparing for hers but Ayan's engagement. She reveals her plans to Tanvi on the pretext that she wouldn't tell this to Asad. Tanvi thinks that Zoya has made her tax easier and she would kill two birds with one stone. Just then, Asad knocks and Tanvi is sent out by Zoya so that he can't see it. While Tanvi takes the gift outside, Zoya engages Asad in foolish talks to divert him from seeing Tanvi. After Zoya leaves, Tanvi thinks to herself about her plans. Zoya collides with Dr. Mr. Duranda, who asks her where she is going on the day of her engagement. Just then, Asad too comes in and they faced they are faced with a barrage of questions by Duranda. He asks what color he likes Zoya best in. He remembers he first meet her and says red. 
Then many more questions happen, which they answer in a rapid fire way. Dolly clarifies that this is just to test their love. Zoya engages in PDA to impress Mr. Duranda. As she goes overward, Asa reminds Zoya that she had to go out. After that, Duranda too begins to leave before asking about the engagement time, which Najma answers 5 o'clock. He leaves hearing this. Asa calls Dilchad for giving him that time. Dilchad says that she didn't have any other option as Duranda would have doubted them otherwise. Asad lives in disgust. While Ayan sits gloomy, Ayan is worried that Asad hasn't come yet and whether Zoya's plan would be successful. The other people are entertaining guests. Badibi tries to get Ayan to talk as to what discomfort he is going through and why she's feeling so helpless. Ayan remembers Razia's threat, Rumaira's love and Zoya's advice. Badibi says that she knows he isn't happy with this relation. Razia sees this and calls Shirin, who says that she's confident that nothing would go wrong now, as Asad has refused to come and Ayan too isn't throwing any tantrums. Showing Badibi sitting with Ayan, Razia tells Shirin that they shouldn't leave Ayan alone with Badibi, as he can be easily instigated. Badibi tells Ayan that she has seen Rashid being destroyed by Razia's plan and can't bear to see him too, fall prey to it. Just then, Shirin takes Badibi forcefully to meet some relative. Zoya arrives there in a book car, seeing which Razia is a little tensed as to who is the person that has come, who she doesn't recognize. Okay guys, thank you for watching today's episode and I do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. Bye.